نبدا دكتور زكريا اوكي اوكي ليتس ستارت وي ار لايف اون فيسبوك اولسو جود ايفنينج ايفري ون وي ار سو هابي تو هوست دكتور زكريا بن طاهر ذس ايفنينج فروم موروكو دكتور زكريا هي واز جراديويت فروم كينج الحسن الثاني يونيفرستي هي ديد هيز دي دي اس اند بي اتش دي ان ذير هي از ا وورلد وايد ليكتشرر in in europe in asia and in latin america is going to speak about surgery about the risks and the benefits of orthognathic surgery i think these days it's very important to speak about this topic especially that uh, we have different options meanwhile after the tads and maybe even the repositioning by giorgio firoelli for the uh, midline shift and uh, mandibular uh, repositioning Uh, I think we have to revise our uh, borders in orthognathic surgery. So I think this uh, topic is very important. Uh, you are most welcome, Dr. Zakaria. We are so happy to host you. Thank you very much. And the stage is yours. You are most welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. I will share, the, will share my screen. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, I can share it? Uh, okay. okay. What is, what is my presentation? Okay. Excuse me. Oh. Sorry, one minute. Oh, can you see the screen? No, no, no not yet. Okay. Sorry, one minute. Uh, so this is my screen, so I can share it now. Okay, it's okay. Can you see the screen now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed. Thank you very much, Dr. Jazeera Al Stidafa. I would like to speak in Arabic because I Dr. Zakaria, if you can speak in English, it's better because we have hosts okay. from Turkey okay. and from Europe. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I want all. Um, I wanted to start with some words in Arabic because it's, and for me it's important for two main reasons. First of all, because I'm with my, my friends and brother from Palestine, but also because Thank you. it's Palestine. And Thank Palestine for Morocco, it's, it's one important country for all Moroccan people. Thank you very much for hosting me here today. And uh, I will uh, try to share with you my small experience about surgical and non-surgical treatments. So before I start, I want to present myself in three minutes. I'm from, well, I live in Casablanca. I'm not from Casablanca. I live in Casablanca, but I'm from north of Morocco. Casablanca, it's uh, the biggest city in, in Morocco, uh, uh, more than 3 million uh, inhabitants in, in Casablanca. It's a new city, not more than one century of existence. And if you want to visit Morocco, avoid not, I will not say avoid Casablanca, but it is not a typical city. It's not a, a typical city of Morocco. Casablanca is well known by this, by this movie uh, of Ingrid Bergman and Humphrey uh, Bogart. But this movie, I think for the new generation, they don't know this movie. The Casablanca is well known by this mosque. Yes. Until I think 2000, it was the most, the third most important mosque in the world after uh, Mecca and Al Medina. The the special thing in this mosque, this mosque is constructed above the water. Uh, the two thirds of this mosque it is uh, constructed above this, uh, above the water. And if you have occasion to visit us in Casablanca, don't. Uh, Miss to don't uh, uh, you must visit this this mosque. Uh, I'm a teacher in Hassan Second University. This is a group of students. We have two masters, master full time master and part time master. Uh, we have eight students a year, and this is uh, one group of our students in our uh, treatment unit in the university. We have a collaboration with foreign uh, um, university, mainly French university. Here you have, here at the bottom, you have a Moroccan student with French student. And we go once a year, one week 
to give lectures for free for all students, Moroccan and, and French students. And we also have some uh, collaboration with other European uh, universities, like here in Poland, in Poznan. And I had the honor to be invited by our professor and friend, Dr. Abbas Zahir, three years ago. We, I went with the two French colleagues to give a lingual course to the Egyptian students. It was really a fantastic uh, experience. And I want to seize this occasion to, to thank Dr. Khalid Abul Azm and Dr. Abbas Zahir for all what they did for to, to, to gather all um, um, uh, Arab society uh, to be together in the uh, Arab Authentic Society. We have also a small activity of research. I worked during 11 years and I did my PhD on bonding, on biomaterials in general, mainly in bonding, but this is not, not an important activity in our university. And once a year, we try to share our experience with doctor in private practice and in, in public and in private uh, sector. Um, here we, or we organized a joint meeting with Egyptian Orthodontic Society in, I think, 2018, yes, in 2018. And we try to invite every year different speakers from all over the world. I think in this, in this session, in 2017, Dr. Ab Dr. Batihi and Dr. Aladdin was with, was, uh, were present with us. Here the two were the joint meeting with the Egyptian Orthodontic Society. And uh, here we organized also a, a meeting, a special meeting with our colleague from Maghreb al Arabi, from Algeria and Tunisia. And uh, this year we invited uh, some colleagues from Saudi Arabia. We have here Iman al Mamlaqani and uh, Manar al Jarsifi from, uh, from Jeddah. And uh, this is the uh, uh, souvenir photo of the last session. And I want to invite you uh, for the next edition. It will be a joint meeting with the with Moroccan society and the Arab society. I am a member of the World Federation of Orthodontic and I represent the AAO in my country and the, one of the ambassadors of the AAO. And I represent my country in, in this association. I have, uh, I'm invited every year in different country and I have a chance to speak three, uh, four languages and I give lecture in, in Spanish, French and English. And I want to please, I must uh, 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 say one important thing. I'm, uh, I did all my education in French and I learned uh, Spanish in my, uh, my uh, parent house. And English came later. So I want you to excuse my mistakes and my pronunciation. The important is the message. So as I said, I'm invited, uh, I was invited in Asia, in Africa, like here in Zimbabwe last uh, September in San Francisco. And my friend, uh, the, my friend Nassib Balut invited me to give a lecture in, in Mexico la, last October. I gave it in, in Spanish. And with French colleague, we organize uh, some uh, uh, lingual courses uh, in mainly in Paris. Sometime in, well, once we were organized once in, in Belgium. And we have, with the, we have two universities with dental school in Casablanca, one private. And in the private uh, university, I was one of the organizer of the adult uh, orthodontic diploma. I have a private practice. We are 12 doctors. We, I have a chance to work in multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary team. And this is, a, this is a chance because we can collaborate and the, the, we can collaborate efficiently and we serve as a, uh, we serve our patient and we will try to do the, our best best to our patient. This is the ortho team. We, I work with four junior orthodontists and I have, uh, we, I have eight assistants. And we try to do our best, as I said, to, to, serve, to, to, to give uh, the best for our patient. And today we will 
talk about surgical treatment versus non-surgical treatment risks and limits. Why this topic? Uh, I gave to uh, Sad uh, two choice and he chose this, this subject. And I think it's a good subject to, to, to discuss because I will show you that the, we, in some situation, we have a problem to choose between surgery and not and and uh, without uh, and treatment without surgery. Well, our main activity is only we do our main activity only with ortho. The main treatment we do are orthodontic treatments, and if we want to have a proportion of orthodontic treatment associated with surgery, I don't think it, it is, it, the, the, the proportion is more than 5%. In my case, I have an average of 10 cases treated with orthodontics with surgery. But in this 5% of cases that I treat with orthodontic treatment and surgery, do we have one option of treatment or always surgery? Well, I think for all cases that we uh, need surgery, we have different situation. The first situation are the, the, the patient with mild skeletal problem. We can treat this patient with camouflage with only orthodontic treatment, but these patients are not really for, in the group of surgical cases, are not important cases in, in terms of number. The second, the second situation are the severe uh, cases with severe problem, skeletal problem. And in these cases, there is no discussion. We must do ortho treatment plus surgery. Okay, what is the situation where there is no discussion? I think the every time we have syndromes, the patient don't come to the ortho office first. They go to the surgeon and the surgeon send us, send us these cases to prepare the teeth. So these cases are uh, the patient asks us to improve the facial aesthetic. So there is no discussion in these cases. They, we must do ortho plus surgery. The second situation where, where, where we ha don't have any discussion is the sequel of the different problems. Like the first patient on the left side, you have the sequel of trauma. The second patient is, is, a, is a problem. The patient has already a first surgery step and the surgery was not good. And the third situation is, is the situation where you have a, 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 a skeletal problem, a severe skeletal problem due to infection. It is a case of bone tuberculosis. Okay. In these cases, there is no discussion. We do surgery to improve the facial aesthetic, uh, facial aesthetic because patient demand, demand is mainly facial aesthetic. Okay. So what type of surgery we have in our uh, option? We have three options. Late surgery is the most common surgery than to the uh, autosurgical cases. And this protocol is classical protocol. We start with ortho, and at the middle of the treatment, we do surgery. And at the end, we have uh, a short period of ortho to, for finishing. And we have two other options, surgery first, we can indicate this surgery in some cases, not in all cases, and I will explain why uh, later. And you have early surgery. When we indicate early surgery, 
Early surgery, we indicate early surgery when we have, for example, when we want, for example, to widen the maxilla. And when we want to widen the maxilla, we must start with uh, first step surgery and then auto and uh, eventually the second step of surgery if we have a class two of cla or class three. So these two situations are the limit situation. Uh, and these situations are not frequent in the group of surgical case with skeletal problem. The most important situation are, first of all, moderate skeletal problem in, in patient, in, uh, in uh, growth patient. So in this patient, we try to uh, correct the skeletal problem using the growth, but when we have a moderate or severe skeletal problem, we don't succeed always, we don't uh, reach always a good result with orthopedic treatments. The third situation is the situation where we have a moderate skeletal problem without growth. And the, the fourth situation is moder moderate to severe skeletal problem. And in these cases, in, this, in the case uh, 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 three and four, we always, the, these cases are borderline, borderline cases. And we are always trying to choose between surgery and without surgery. And the majority of our patients don't want surgery. Don't want surgery. So I, will, I want to be honest with you. In uh, few, in, in uh, near past, I think seven or eight years, uh, uh, I started to change my, my manner to, 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 to solve this problem in 2011, 2012. And in the, in, past, in the past, I always indicate surgery. And if the patient don't want surgery, I refuse to do treatment. And I think now this is a mistake. This is a mistake. So in this situation, in this situation, we have two options. In these borderline cases, we have compensation or autosurgery. Okay, and we always, uh, are, we are in the middle and we are not really very sure to choose the first option or the second option. So I put here some important element or point to take in consideration to facilitate the decision. The first point, a chief complaint. We must try to satisfy our patient. So the chief complaint is important to take in consideration. But sometimes the chief complaint, we cannot reach a chief complaint of the patient. The second point is, this, is the facial pattern. The facial pattern can help us to compensate the case. And sometimes we, even if the case is easy to compensate, the facial pattern can contraindicate the, this option. Sagittal discrepancy. Sagittal discrepancy. The sagittal discrepancy is always also this, uh, important. For example, if we have a, um, a middle class um, class three, we can compensate it because the environment can uh, allow us to compensate the case, and the, the big class three cannot compensate it. The dimension to correct the vertical dimension, the sagittal dimension. Which dimension we must correct? And for some dimension it is easier to compensate than the other. Perio environment. The perio environment is also important because we will push in these limit cases the teeth at the limit of the, 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 perio, uh, the perio bone. So we must can take into consideration this point. And the stability, sometimes we can compensate. And because we are sure that the case will not be stable, we cannot choose, the, for example, the compensation. Psychological profile. Sometimes we uh, avoid to treat some surgical cases because if we touch the face of the case, of the, of the patient, we'll have a lot of problem. So we must assess the 
psychological profile of every patient. And patient motivation, for example, if we use mini screws or other tests to compensate a case, we must uh, uh, know that this type of option is very hard to use and it's a, a longer treatment. So let's start with G chief complaints. This first patient is uh, one of class, my uh, class three patient. She came to the office with a, a, a precise chief complaint. She wants to improve her facial uh, um, aesthetic. Well, she's in class three. She's a symmetrical case. Okay. And in these cases, can we advise the patient to, to choose other option? It depends on the occlusion. So the occlusion of the patient is in class three. And if I ask you, can we compensate the case? I think because the class three is not too important, this class three can be compensated, easily compensated. This is the first element to take in consideration, the discrepancy of the occlusion. Second element is the discrepancy of the jaw. We have a mild skeletal problem. So the case can be compensated. So this is the result we reach. Before and after, we could reach a good result with uh, uh, we uh, reach the main ob ortho objective, which is the class one, uh, uh, lateral class one, uh, canine, canine, and molar. And if we compensate the case, we will be satisfied as an orthodontist, but the patient will not be satisfied. So, what we did in this case is surgery. There is no discussion because surgery can, it's only surgery that can correct the asymmetry. So this is the patient before uh, the treatment. What we do is classical protocol. I don't think I um, learn you uh, something new in these cases. We prepare the teeth, we decompensate, we try to decompensate. We try to create a good decompensation on the anterior teeth to help the movement of the surgeon, of the jaws. So this is after compensation, decompensation, and this is after the correction. And this is the occlusion at the end of the treatment. And the most important thing is the facial result. We could reach a good result and we could uh, 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 reach the chief complaint of the patient. Not in sagittal view, because the patient don't uh, see themselves in, in the lateral, uh, in, on, on lateral views. They are more interested on frontal view. And the patient, the facial aesthetic of the patient was improved by surgery. And I think we reached uh, what the patient asked us to reach. Okay, this is the three step of the treatment before uh, um, uh, the treatment, after decompensation and at the end of the treatment. Okay. Second situation, chief complaint. Patient wants to align the teeth and to close, to close the anterior space and she wants me to do only ortho treatment. So the patient was sent to my office by a, 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 a Belgian colleague. He did four year ortho treatment, four year. And the case was not stable. And the patient still had the asymmetry. I can accept only ortho treatment in this case. I can accept it. But I am sure if I accept only the ortho treatment, the relapse will be 100%. Uh, I will, the, the, the case will relapse 100%. So 
So I refuse to treat this, this, this patient, even if the chief complaint is not to, imp to improve the facial aesthetic. So look at what happened with the first, the first treatment. The first orthodontist wanted to compensate the case and he pushed, I think, the teeth outside the bone. And even if I, we didn't have this recession, I think the occlusion is not good. And if I accepted a, 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 an only an auto treatment, I am sure I will not be, the case will not be still. So what we did is uh, look at the cant she has, she had uh, uh, before the treatment. We have an asymmetry with the cant, with cant of occlusion plane. And what we did is to prepare the teeth and to do surgery, even if the patient, the chief complaint, the patient, the patient is all, only uh, uh, auto treatment. So this is before and after, after the correction of the occlusion cans. And when we correct the occlusion cans, we can correct the facial uh, uh, aesthetic problem. This is before the treatment. This is after decompensation, and this is at the end of the treatment. So, even if the chief complains, if the, if the, if the, even if the patient don't want surgery, in some cases, we must refuse the ortho treatment only because we, we must know that these cases will not be stable. The second important point to take in consideration is the facial, facial pattern. Look at this patient. If I uh, tell you that this patient is surgical case, we will not believe me. Why? Because the facial is, uh, there is no important uh, um, aesthetic problem in, 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 uh, in facial view. So the, the patient came to my office after first treatment, of auto, she was not satisfied. And even if the patient has no big skeletal problem, you will see in the lateral cephalogram in the radio, you will, you will see the, the, the importance of the, the sagittal discrepancy. And because the, 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 she has no uh, big problem on his facial aesthetic, this patient, if you touch them, with surgery, you will have a big problem. So if we can compensate the case, good. If we cannot compensate the case, we can do only an auto treatment without correction of the closure, sagittal occlusion. Look at this case, adult patient with limit period uh, 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 situation in the anterior teeth. We, we have a recession here in the, in the, I think, 41. Yes, it's 41. We have a little recession. And the sagittal discrepancy is very big. And I want you to be always aware about the photos. Photos don't show you all the details. And believe me, in when the patient was in the chair, the, the problem I saw at that moment was very, very big. So look at this. Uh, we have the at least five millimeters to correct. And with this very uh, limits problem, I was afraid to correct it only on import. But I had another, I had a, a problem with the facial view because the, pro, the, 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 the patient don't have a big facial uh, um, uh, aesthetic problem. So what we did is to correct it only with ortho, but with special tool. Why? Because in this case, if you try only with elastics, we, we, you will lose a lot of time. So what we, I decide in these cases is to put always uh, 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 an appliance like Fossus to try to correct the class, the class two. 
from the beginning. I don't use elastic. I try to use elastic only for finishing, like in this case. Uh, at six months, at nine months, and at 17 months, we start finishing with elastics. But the correction of the collusion, always, always with uh, 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 a special tool like a uh, force. This is the occlusion at the end of the treatment. We reach uh, not a, a perfect class one. We still have a, a still, we still have a, a small class two, but I want you to notice what happened here. Look at the recession. I think we have a little more recession before than after. And in these cases, we can, take in consideration only the photo at the end of the treatment. But in these cases, we must uh, see the patient one year and two year and three year after the end of the treatment. And in this patient, you will see more recession in these uh, uh, lower incisors. But at the end, the most important thing for me is the correction of the occlusion, the stability, and even if we don't improve the profile because the patient don't, don't, didn't have a big problem at the beginning of the treatment. At the end of the treatment, look at the face of the patient. It seems that we did surgery. Excuse me, I have a question here. Thank you. So it seems like the patient uh, receive surgery, and we treat it only with ortho, 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 ortho. And this is the mistake I did in the past. In the past, I refused to use uh, only ortho treatment in this patient, and I think it's mistake. We can, we must give another chance to our patient, uh, and using simple tools. Yes, I use tests, but believe me, we can reach a good result only with elastics and we can have, use other special tools in the special situation. Special pattern. What can we offer to hyperdiversion? In the, in the, in the previous case, we, we had a, a hyperdiversion patient and then we know we can compensate the case, these cases in three dimensions in transverse dimension and sagittal dimension and the vertical dimension. But we cannot do this option, we cannot choose this option for patients with hyperdiversion. Why? Because we know that this patient will relapse. This patient ca came to my office with a special demand. The patient, the, the band asked me to do something for this incisor. And what can we do for this incisor? We cannot do prosthetic because we have a big incisor. Uh, if we extract, we will have a big problem. We will lose a lot of bone and the patient will lose, if he lose the bone, we will have the problem to do implant when we will be adult. So because these cases we had a another two centrals on the left side. What we did is uh, take the second centrals of the left side and put it on the right side. But this option obliged me to, 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 to not think to the surgery after. Why? Because if we choose this option, we will have an ankylosis. And in this patient, we have a chance. Look at the pattern of the face, hyperdiversion. So because I choose to, 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 do, to put this, the second center on the left side, to put it on the right side, I choose the, the ortho option, compensation, even if the patient have a bad patterns to, for compensation. So what we did, so this is before, after transposition and the end of the treatment. The occlusion, good occlusion, yes. But this occlusion is a stable occlusion. 
at the long term, I don't think it is stable occlusion. Why? Because in this pattern, when we push the lower incisor forward, we know that every time we push the lower incisor forward in the hyperdiversion, it will relapse. So I did this choice because I had I did a transposition of the upper incisor, but I think I will see the patient uh, in the future uh, because it he will relapse. And the second problem in this case, even if the smile is good, the profile is not good. The result in the profile is not good. Some, in some situation, the facial pattern cannot allow us to do ortho treatment. Look at this patient. No big problem in, uh, uh, with aesthetic, facial aesthetic. And the patient came for ortho treatment only. Excuse me. So with this occlusion, excuse me, with this occlusion, can we do ortho treatment with this occlusion? We cannot do the ortho treatment with this occlusion. Why? Because we need to correct the skeletal problem. And then after we can level the curve of the spear and to correct the occlusion. And in this situation, the surgery is important, even if the patient asks us to do only an ortho treatment. And in these cases, if you don't do surgery first, you cannot do the ortho treatment and you cannot choose the classical protocol. So in these cases, because we choose uh, sur uh, surgery first, the most important thing for simulation is to use 3D and softwares to simulate the, the, the surgery. And then after, to make um, a splint with 3D printer. And then after, the, the, the splint is more accurate with, this, uh, with these tools than with classical tools when we send our models to classical lab. This is the occlusion at the end. So the facial pattern is an important point to take in consideration if we want to choose between compensation and uh, ortho surgery treatment. Sagittal discrepancy. Well, every time we have a big skeletal problem, we try to don't uh, use compensation, but there is some difference in between the cases. The most important thing to take in consideration is crowding in these cases. Crowding, for example, the class three upper arch for the class two lower arch. If we have, for example, in class three more crowding in the lower arch than the, in the upper arch, we cannot compensate these cases. This case is a surgical case because it's a big class three. So patient and the mother of the patient don't want surgery. And in this case, it's really a big class three, more than seven millimeters. And the problem we have uh, crowding at the upper and the lower, and the lower jaw. But the, we have a, a small chance that the crowding of the upper jaw is more important than in the, than in the lower jaw. So I did. I said to the model that I will try to do my best. If I don't succeed, we will move to surgery. She accepted. So we look at the 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 discrepancy, sagittal discrepancy. Too big for compensation. But because I had crowding, big crowding at the upper arch, I decided to try without surgery. This is the final result. It's not a good result. I feel very uh, not comfortable when I reach some this, this, this result 
especially in the latter, in the transvaal dimension. But this is a compromise solution. Patients don't want surgery. But I think this is a solution we can offer to, to our patient. We could compensate the case. Why? Because, as I said, the crowding helped me to widen the, 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 the maxilla in the sagittal dimension and in a little bit in the transverse dimension. Excuse me, Dr. Zakaria, can I ask a question about this case? Yes. In the, in the pre-treatment lateral cephalometry, is the cephalometry in the uh, centric relation or the centric occlusion? So is there any habitual closure in this? Yes, it's important. This is a good question. We have a little, I think I, I remember two millimeter of uh, functional protrusion. Oh, pushing the mandible forward. Yes. But even if we push the mandible in the centric position, we still had a, a, a big sagittal discrepancy. Okay. This is the, fi the final result. No problem, no improvement on the frontal view, but in, in the smile, we, we could improve the smile, but look at the transfer correction. It's not a good correction, but I think it, I, it's a good compromise. It's not very bad. This is the correction on uh, sagittal view. I think we improved a little bit the profile. Class two, hyperdivergent. Like what we, we said previously, every time we have a hyperdiversion, we will have a problem to compensate it. These patients went to three or four offices and uh, uh, all the previous doctor before she came to my office indicate surgery. And they are right. This case is surgical case. But she didn't understand why we indicate always surgery in, in, in her case. You know why? Because first of all, she is not class three. Second, because the soft tissue should compensate the class two. Food class two. Important class two. Okay. Hyperdivergent. The lower incisor is already for an, in forward position. And periodont is limited in this case. I tried, because she insists to do only ortho, I tried to solve the problem with forces and tads. I started pushing the lower incisor forward, more forward. And in the second step, I put two mini screws at the upper jaw, at the upper jaw to push a little bit, a little bit the, the upper arch posteriorly. We reached this result. It's not a perfect result. Look at the relation and in the anterior teeth. We still have two millimeters. But believe me, the patient was really, really very satisfied. And this is important. The second important thing is stability. Is this occlusion will be stable? Why? Because we have a hyperdiversion and we still have class two. Is this case will be stable? I don't think so. So what we must say to the, our patient, they must, even if are, they are satisfied with the results, facially and occlusally, they must wear a permanent retention, a special permanent retention. Which special permanent retention? Upper splint, lower splint, put it together. Huh? And she must put and uh, wear this, this splint all the nights. The fourth, the, four, in, 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 the fourth important point is the dimension to correct. We can compensate some dimension more easily than other dimension. I think 
the sagittal dimension and special in class three, we, are, we can compensate it easily than the other, than class two, only with the elastic. And we can correct from the beginning and easily and quickly the class three. This patient is in class three, but the soft tissue compensates the, the, the aesthetic problem. Uh, she has uh, um, a big face, a big lower, um, uh, the proportion of the lower um, part of the face is important. It's a typically uh, uh, a typical problem in class three. We had we 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 had in in in, um, in uh, class three. This is the radio. The class three is not very very big, but I think it's a surgical case. This is the the occlusion before we start. I think if we the patient had a little asymmetry. So the class one on the left side, it's not a class one, it's really a class two because the, 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 there is a little movement of the mandible on the, on the left side. This is the final result. How we correct this, 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 this occlusion? Really, it's an, an, an easy case to correct with elastic, but we must start elastic from the beginning with the round wires, with round wires. What we did is to put a bite plane on the anterior lower incisor and then class three elastic from the beginning. And in four months, we could correct the class three uh, occlusion. And then after it's, it's uh, classical uh, steps, we try to finish the case uh, uh, the problem here, we have, we lose a lot of torque on the lower incisor, so we use a bracket, we invert the bracket to, to, to gain more torque because we compensate a lot with elastics. And this is the final result. At the end of the treatment, in the frontal view, when the patient smiled, it seems like we did, uh, like we, we did surgery. And this is an option we can offer of to our patient. Why to avoid this option for our patient? And in the, really in the past, I, re, I always refused to treat this patient only with orthotreatment. Some dimensions are more difficult to correct than others. For example, the sagittal uh, dimension, we can correct more easily than the transverse uh, discrepancies. Look at this patient. This patient came to my office asking me to correct the ortho treatment. And the, this patient needs to, uh, uh, um, a surgery to widen the upper jaw. Because she had a, a, a class three, a class three compensate, naturally compensated, but in the lateral uh, relation, uh, occlusal relation, we must widen the, the, the jaw. And in these cases, mostly um, uh, uh, in adult patient, it is really, really uh, very difficult to compensate the transfer dimension. An important thing, we can compensate easily the transfer dimension if we have a hyperdiversion. If we have the hyperdiversion is more difficult. And in this case, we had a lot of problem to compensate the, the transverse occlusion. We reach this result. It's not uh, an ideal occlusion, but I think it's uncompromising. The problem is this occlusion will be stable or not. I don't th think it will be very stable, but we uh, uh, say all these details to the patient before we start. This is before and after, no correction in such a world because the patient was already uh, uh, compensated in such a damage. No problem in the profile view. And we improve the smile because we, we, we move uh, uh, lateral teeth labially a lot. So she has a dental smile uh, after the treatment rather than before the treatment. Perio environment. The perio environment is important to choose between the two options, between compensation and, and surgery. 
This patient is in class two, and we have always the same problem with the surgical uh, uh, skeletal problem with class two. They don't understand why we indicate surgery, because even if we have a big gap or big discrepancy in, the sagittal, in between the upper jaw and the lower jaw, they don't understand why we indicate surgery. You know why? Always because the soft tissue compensates the problem. So this patient came to my office with a symmetrical occlusion. We have here a full class, excuse me, full class two, full class two on the right side and full class one on the left side. And the problem is the, the, the soft tissue and the period problem she had in the anterior lower incisors. And the second problem is the sagittal discrepancy. How can we push this incisor forward without provoking some period problem? And we started the, 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 the case with a period problem. So, can we compensate the case? The patient refuses the surgery. And in the past, as I said at the beginning, in this situation, I always refuse uh, only ortho treatment. And from seven years ago, I tried to change my way to, to treat my case, even if I don't reach a good occlusion result, result at the end. So I, I decided to, to try compensation. I always uh, uh, say to the patient that I will try. If I reach a good result, it's, it's okay. But if I don't reach a good result, I will stop in the, in the step where the, the risk is too high. So I try to compensate between the upper and the lower jaw. How? By pushing by opening the space of the lower absent first molar on the left side. So when I put the coil, I push the teeth forward. So I, this is the direction of the compensation and with a little stripping on the upper jaw. Because it's not sufficient to use only elastic and, and, and uh, coils to correct this malocclusion, I used, in this case, uh, unilateral forces to correct the, uh, the, uh, the, the class two on the, right, on the right side. And with the stripping and with some elastic, I reached this result at the end. Look at the relation at the anterior teeth between the upper and the lower jaw. It's not really perfect. It's not perfect relation. But I think it's a good compensation, a good uh, compromise, because we reach, even if we don't reach a good contact on the anterior teeth, I think we reach a class one on the right and on the left side. This is the occlusion uh, uh, before and after, 16 months of the treatment. And this is the patient, oh, uh, no improvement on the facial view because the, the, this is a class two. And the class two, as I said, we have a soft tissue, tissue who comp which compensate the, the skeletal problem. Before and after. Stability, important element. We want to finish all our cases, ortho cases or ortho surgical cases, or all the cases, all our cases, we want to finish it, and the, the, what we want to, to have is a stable result in the long term. And I learned a lot with this patient. She came to my office asking me all the ortho treatment. And when I saw, and I saw this facial pattern, I refused to treat her with only ortho treatment. I think 12 years ago. And she went, she refused my option, ortho surgery, and she disappeared two months. She came back to my office and she accepted my option, ortho surgery option. Well, not, uh, she had not a big class two, 
open bytes, and open byte, we know how to correct it with ortho treatments. We have a risky value in lower incisor. And look at what happened during the treatment. I started the treatment with ortho surgical option. And during the treatment, the open byte closed. And at this stage, at this stage, she asked me, why you want me to do surgery? I came to your office only to have this result. Why you want me to do surgery? And believe me, I was confused. And I told her, yes, we can try to continue only with ortho. And we started using a lot of elastic to, to, to correct this small class. Believe me more than six months with elastics. The class two is still here. And as I told you at the beginning, when someone show you photos, the photos don't show all the details. And look at what uh, the, the situation, the, the relation, uh, the occlusal relationship at this, at this situation. Is it a good result? No. Is it a stable result? Never, it will be never a stable result. Why? If I show you only this view, it's maybe a good result. But look at what we have in the anterior teeth. If I debound this case in this situation, it will relapse in three dimensions. The open by the class two, the hybrid, all will relapse. So we decided to do surgery in this case. We reach a good result in occlusal. In, uh, in, uh, we have a good relation in the lateral view of the occlusion. And this is the result of frontal view one year after surgery. Stable result. And this is the important thing to do. We can compensate it, yes, but it will not be stable. Second problem, look at what, what we provoke on the lower periodon. We push with our elastic, the lower teeth forward. Uh, uh, in, we, we, we push the lower teeth more than uh, the, the limit. So we provoke the recession. So we take, must take in consideration stability and all, also, also the, 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 the perio environment. This is, the final result. I think it's a good result, even if the patient don't um, ask us to improve her facial view, but believe me, she was really satisfied and she didn't regret this option. This is on frontal view before and after. Psychological profile. The psychological profile is also important. Why? Because in some situation, it's clear we must do surgery. And if we have a special psychological profile, we must avoid surgery. We can offer compensation or the third option, alignment, and leave the occlusion with class two or class three. But the mistake uh, we, we can do in some special patient is to offer surgery, even if the facial uh, aesthetic is, there is no big problem in facial view. And if the profile of the, the patient is not uh, very, you are not certain that is, you, if you do surgery, we don't have some uh, uh, psychological problem with the patient. This patient came to my office. He was treated in Paris. My professor sent it to me. And he came with this uh, uh, this relation skeletal the skeletal uh, um, pattern, and he and when I examined her, his occlusion, I remember I, he was in class two, big class two, and he gave me his radio before the first treatment. He was in class in class three, and I told him, "You give me." Uh, uh, a wrong radio and he told me no 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 these radios are my radios 
And I told him, why you are in class? He told me that I was in class three. I did a first treatment and the surgeon moved the jaw and he put the jaw in class two. Oh, what can we do with this patient? He wants to improve his face. Look, he was affected, psych affected psychologically. So the, sur the surgery is a unique option for this patient to correct his problem. So what we decide to do is look at, this is the, my radio. Before my treatment, he did a first uh, surgical treatment to correct the class three. And now he is in class two. So what we did decide to do is to retweet the patient with ortho to prepare the, the teeth and then after to, to, to do a surgery to correct the, the class two. This is the final occlusion. And it's true that we, we could not improve a lot the, the facial because he didn't have a big a facial problem because he moved from class two, class three to class, class two. And we said that class two, there's no big problem with aesthetics, but he was so affected that he tried to improve her facial. He, even if he did the second surgery, he was not satisfied because uh, he, he always felt, felt that something is wrong in his face. So what he tried to do is to do some other surgery to improve, for example, the, the chin. And I don't know how we can call it in, in English, this part, of the, this part of the face. So he put up two prosthesis in the upper jaw to improve the, the facial view. This is before and, and after. Finally, patient motivation. We can, in some cases, choose uh, um, compensation option with uh, some devices. But we must tell the patient that these options are very difficult option. And we, he must know that the, the 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 period of the treatment probably 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 will be a, a big a big uh, 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 will have a big period of, of treatment. This patient came to my office. The chief complaint is a gingival smile. She's a, a student in, in medicine, and because this, the the she had a big. Uh, she's um, hyperdivergent and uh, with uh, a, a big gingival smile. I told her that we cannot correct this problem with only ortho. So she came, well, she did a first treatment with uh, she, uh, the first ortho reached this result. We don't have a good torque on the upper incisor, not good occlusion lateral. But the chief complaint of the patient is gingival smile. Look at what happened with the first treatment. Look at this incisor. This incisor must be, the talk of the incisor must be corrected, first of all. And after we can move to surgery, after decompensation. What type of surgery? Impaction and class two surgery and, uh, and uh, we can also do, in these cases, genioplasty. But when we decompensate the case, the patient told me, and even if she accepted at the beginning of surgery, she told me that uh, if I can do something without surgery, uh, she will accept. But surgery, she don't uh, want to take a risk to do surgery. So we tried with mini screws. I don't like this type of option. But in some cases, we can offer this option, but uh, look at the period of the treatment, 31 months. Our treatment on average is 18 months and sometimes 24 months. But when we have more than 24 months, it, the case we ca can start to be very, 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 very difficult for the patient because we, he lose the motivation and the ortho because he, uh, um, at the end, he, he's 
tied with the, with the case. So we tried to solve the problem with, with mini screws and we could intrude the upper, the upper arch. Look at here the difference, the, the, the difference between the, this photo and this photo. Look at the amount of the intrusion. We cannot have a lot of amount of intrusion in the posterity. On average, we have between one and two millimeters on the posterior. But because we have a hybrid version, we can move an, uh, counterclockwise the, the occlusion plane. So we could intrude, look at here the relation between the, the uh, I don't know how we call it in, in English, the sinus, uh, between the, the posterior, how we call it, Dr. Sinus, Ahmed? Sinus, the same, sinus. sinus between, between the sinus and the, and the upper, uh, molars. We intrude the upper molar, but not too much. But the, and the upper in, incisor, we intrude, uh, I think, our loss. This is the final result. Uh, it's not all, also a good result. We still need to do a gingivectomy to improve uh, the smile. The smile. And this is the, the torque is not, we have, uh, we could reduce the torque on the, this incisor because we have a little gap between upper incisor and lower, but I think it's uh, a good compromise. And this is the, the final result. And in this case, we could, with the intrusion, we could move a little bit forward the lower jaw and reduce, because we have a rotation, counterclockwise rotation, we could re reduce the class two. This is the final result. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Zakaria. Thank you for this uh, nice and uh, valuable presentation. Really nice results. So um, I think you, you have, uh, you, you will, you're still fasting until now. The after is after maybe 10 minutes or 20 minutes in Morocco. No, don't problem. We, 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 can, we can stay for questions. Don't problem. We, I have Tamra. Huh? Tamra. And, uh, don't, we, we can Tamra. take our time. Don't worry about Tamra. it. Uh, fi, uh, can you uh, ask Dr. Dr. Hala? Or in the first Dr. Nawal. Dr. Nawal, can you ask if there was any uh, uh, TMD problems in the in the case in the class three case which I asked about. Uh, yes, yeah, no, no, uh, yes, I know the the case. No TMD TMD problem. Yeah, no, no TMD problems. And we have a chance. We know the TMD problem. I don't know how you solve the TMD problems. The TMD problems. We have three three main situations, and even if we have a, a problem like. Uh, um, a displacement of the discs, I don't think it's a big problem. We can manage it with some, 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 some medicine and some problem. But in this case, to, to have an, a, a clear answer, I didn't have any, any, any TMG problem. Okay. Uh, Dr. Man uh, Rafer uh, is raising up his hand. I don't know. I'm trying to unmute him. Dr. Hisham, you can speak. Shukran, I want to say, I'll take a Dr. Ahmad, Dr. Saad. English, Dr. Hisham, because we have people, uh, not Arab people, listening to us. Uh, uh, thank you, Akhi uh, Zakaria, for this valuable presentation. Uh, I, I have two questions. Uh, first um, of all, uh, why did you try to use a um, micro implant to do, for example, in class two cases, uh, in mass retraction instead of using forces? Um, my second part uh, of the uh, question, it's about um, forces. Did you use this uh, device for the growing patients or for all uh, the type of patients uh, to correct the class two? Okay, I will start with the second uh, question, Dr. Hisham. Uh, the, the forces, I use forces for, in two situations. 
in uh, adolescent patients that I feel that the motivation is not good, I directly avoid to use elastics. So I put forces every time I feel that the patient will not collaborate in okay. adolescent patients. But in adult patients, I use forces than elastics when the discrepancy is too big. I don't use elastic, at least for correction of the cruiser, if the discrepancy is big. I started in the, my, my mind with forces. Okay. Okay? This is the two... Okay. The two uh, uh, situation where I use, and as I as as you see, Doctor Hisham, that I can use it in adult patient in one side or in both sides. No, no problem. When you use it in only one side, you will have a little can created by the force of the force. But it is not a problem. You can you can correct this. This problem, this side problem, side effects with elastic in finishing state. Okay. So for the first, uh, if I understand, can you repeat the first question, mm -hmm. Dr. Hisham? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, the first question in cases of uh, uh, class two, for example, uh, and you did uh, 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 class two elastics or forces, did you try to use, for example, using uh, TADS? Uh, distalized mass for the upper arch for for the the foot. Okay. Okay. I understand your question, uh, doctor. Rather than to use forces, why don't use tads at the upper arch? Okay. To do distalization. Yeah, yeah. Yes, distalization. I understand your uh, your question, uh, doctor Hisham. In most class two cases, we have a problem in the lower jaw. In the, in the upper incisor, it's in good position. And I choose this option when I have an upper incisor little forward, or when even if I have like a patient I, I show you with a, a big class two and hyperdiversion, when I have a big class two, and I cannot compensate all the class two with moving a lower incisor forward. So yeah. I leave this option because in my daily practice, I use really, really uh, the test, I don't use a lot. Of it. And I believe you, Haida Hisham, I know that you are educated in this, we are educated in the, at the same school. We can reach a good result, even if the severe skeletal problem only with elastics. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. I have much. a question from uh, Dr. Ma'an. Dr. Ma'an, Fadal. Ma'an, Okay, Dr. Riyad Batikh, Fadal. Allah, thank you, Dr. Zakaria. Shukran, Dr. Batikh, shukran. محضرتك جيدة. It's very nice. شكرا. Uh, two, two questions or two comments. One, okay. if we have adult case and the problem is the maxilla, either you go for surgery or we go for extraction. Am I right? Uh, TAD alone or distalization in upper arch is very difficult. This is the first question. When you have adult case, severe class two, either you go for extraction, camouflage, or, or surgery to move, to move the maxilla backwards. Am I right or wrong? Other things you do will not help. Right? First one. Second one is that my comment don't don't guarantee our results. Relapse will happen. How much you are, after 20 years, for 25 years, you will see the cases. And you will see that there's a lot of relapse okay. for our cases. Mm -hmm. uh, the second question is, I think, the most important question we can ask ourselves in our daily practice. How, what will happen in the near future, future, on the middle future, 
on the on, uh, or in the long term. We know when we, uh, in some cases, and I've shown some, some situation like uh, what I will say, that if we, in some situation, if we choose compensation, it will not be stable. And in this case, we will, in this situation, we must tell the truth to the patient and they be, must be aware that they must, if they want to, to, to uh, uh, how can we say it in English, to, uh, if, you want, if they want that the result, keep this stable. to keep the result in the long term, they must put uh, long term, uh, long term uh, retention. This is what I what I mean. That they have to, to understand that we need longer retention, not five years or ten years. Yeah, long term retention. Long but term. believe me, Doctor Riyad, in the most cases I show, like in the class three case, if we have a good stable occlusion, it's stable. The class three I shown, the big class three I shown, I still saw him five years after. And we know that the, the real, we don't need to wait more than six months to see the relapse. After a uh, um, few months, we can notice that the case will be stable or not. And in this case, the most cases I show, they are really, really stable. But this is because we did, I think, a good choice. But in some cases, uh, we put always a long-term a long term retention. Can you please, uh, uh, Dr. Riyad, can you repeat, please, the first question? I didn't understand first the first question. question about skeletal class two. Skeletal class two. Not yes. adult cases that we can't use headgear or we can't use functional places. And the problem is maxilla. Mm -hmm. Either we go for surgery, for extraction, or for surgery. Okay. What's your, about your opinion about this? Okay. That the problem is the maxilla, other <laughs> case, severe skeletal yes. cases. You cannot yes. compensate it by simple uh, proclination of the lower and uh, the proclination of upper. Yes. So sometimes, in some cases, even myself, 5% of my cases is extraction and, and 95 non extraction. But in some cases, skeletal <coughs> class 2, the problem is uh, maxilla. Either I go for surgery or I camouflage for extraction, extraction by first premolars. Okay, okay. Uh, important question. Uh, we, I don't, uh, Dr. Batichi, tell us something important. I, I didn't show any case with extraction. And he's right because we can compensate cases doing extractions. But the problem, with extraction in the class two, the majority of the class two, the majority of the class two are uh, the, the, the class two with the mandibular problem. And when we control the upper incisor, the upper incisor is in good position. We can, if we extract, we will have a big aesthetic. I'm saying about maxillary problem, not mandibular yes, problem. Yes, yes, but we can, for example, you said an important thing, that we can compensate doing extraction the upper, upper jaw so we can compensate the class two. But in the majority of class two, we have a, a problem on the mandible. And in class three, we have the, 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 the opposite side. Most of class people three. come in with class three, they say, oh, we, I have a big, a big mandible. And it's not true. The majority of class three, it's a small maxilla. You, yes, know what? you know what? You know what? The majority of surgeons try to move the mandibular backward in the class, and this is a mistake. And yes. for the problem of the of the class two, we we, the, we have also the option of the option of the surgery on the upper jaw. But the problem of the upper jaw surgery of upper jaw, we cannot move it more than two or three millimeters backward. Why? Because we have an anatomic, uh, an anatomical, um, uh, yeah, uh, we have uh, I don't know pterygoid yeah. and uh, pterygoid plate, pterygoid exactly. complex. And the thing that we try to do is to do a trauma on this side of the the, the jaw to move a little bit, but we cannot gain more than two or three millimeters of it. I yeah, think for the profit, it's just two millimeters. 
Yes, two or three millimeters, not, 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 not small. So this is an option. The option Dr. Batichi gave us, they must be uh, options in our arsenals, but they don't, they must not be the most important uh, option in the treatment of class two, because we have in extraction case, we have a problem of aesthetic result at the end. And with surgery, we will not move back. We cannot move backwards a lot, the aperture. Okay, thank you, Dr. Zakaria. We have a question from Dr. Nawal, but it is in French. I can, yes, I can translate it. Yeah, you uh, have uh, uh, how you change your occlusal plan uh, your, your occlusal plan, uh, 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 how you change your treatment plan from non-surgical treatment to surgical treatment. Well, this is a discussion you must have with your patient at the beginning. If you say to the patient, you are a surgical case, you have two options. We can try without surgery. Uh, in, in the limit case, not in the, not in the limit case, in the case we saw that we can try to do, not in the limit case. So this is the discussion we can, must have with the patient. You, they must be aware that this option is not a good option. We can try with surgery, with, with ortho. And if we cannot reach a good result, we must uh, either stop or to move to surgery. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Zakaria. I think we, we have finished the questions. If there's I more- have this Dr. Hala, tfaddali. Yes, please, Dr. Hala. Ah, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Zakaria, for a very nice uh, lecture. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Hello? Yeah, yeah. No, it's ah, ah, okay. Uh, for the period case, I noticed that there, uh, there was a loss of the lower incisor, right? Am no. I right? No. There was a triangular. Uh, yes. Good question. Yeah. Good question, Hala. Good question. But, but uh, okay. I noticed that I thought that there was a loss of lower incisor. So I thought if you open the space for the lower incisor, it might make the treatment easier. No. Uh, yes. Yes, Hala. So I will. I can. I can show the case quickly. So. Uh, what is the yes here? This this case, Hala. I don't see it. Okay, I, I, excuse me. This I think this case. Yes, this case, right? Okay. Yes, there is a yeah. triangular. Uh, or incisor. Triangular. But because she had a lower a molar absent, we have an asymmetry and. She had a diastema here, opened here, with a perio problem. But we have four incisors, not three incisors. Four. Uh, four. Yeah. And because we had an asymmetry, it helps to correct the sagittal discrepancy. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Can, can you show the result, please? Yes. The end of the treatment? Yeah, end of treatment. This is the this is the occlusion. And this is the occlusion laterally. It's true, we don't have a good result in the relation between the lower incisor and the upper incisor. Mm. Thank you very much. Welcome. Okay, Dr. Zakaria, thank you very much. It was a pleasure for us to, to host you. And I hope that we'll uh, keep in touch with you. I saw some names. Uh, I would like to, to, to say hello for them. Dr. Jihad Al-Baroudi from Syria and Dr. Joseph Busirhal from Lebanon. It's, a, it's an honor for us to, to host them here. It's an honor for us. Uh, they are with us. So uh, best regards for them. And thank you very much, Dr. Zakaria. Hope to <laughs> two words in Arabic now. Arabic. Yes. Shukr <laughs> Shukr I posted the poster 
of a Palestinian Orthodox society, believe me. يعني المغاربة هنأوني وهنأوني وهنأوني شكرا جزيلا لكم وإن شاء الله هنكون we will keep in touch إن شاء الله شكرا دكتور شكرا لك دكتور شكرا ظروف أطيب من هيك دكتور زكريا وإن شاء الله يعني المغرب في القلب ولا دكتور زكريا شكرا وكل العرب في القلب شكرا 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 لك دكتور زكريا شكرا لك دكتور سعد ما webinar in I posted the webinar in the um, a page of Arab Orthodox Society Saturday at 12 o'clock. Welcome if you can participate with us. Inshallah. Dr. Saeed Al Astal uh, wrote uh, a com uh, comment. Merci yes, beaucoup, he... Dr. Yes. Zakaria. Yes, Dr. Astal, he usually came to Morocco to our meeting. Thank you, uh, thank you, Dr. Astal. Inshallah, we'll all come to uh, Dr. Zakaria. Thank you very much. Muhammad. I hope to host you personally, face to face, here in Palestine very soon. Inshallah. Inshallah. Shukran, 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 Dr. Saad. Shukran, Dr. Saad. Thank you. We're here, Dr. Saad. Shukran, Dr. Saad. Shukran, Dr. Saad. Shukran, Dr. Saad. Shukran, Dr. Saad. See you. Shukran, Dr. Saad. Shukran, Dr. Saad. شكرا السلام عليكم السلام عليكم